Hey, everybody. So before we start the show, we want to express our sadness about the death of Denny Lane. He passed away yesterday, December 5th. Denny was a founding member of the Moody Blues and, of course, was later one of the three founding members of Wings alongside Paul and Linda McCartney. He was with Wings for its entire 10-year run. He was the only band member not named McCartney to do this. And he was the co-writer for Mull of Kintyre, which was Wings' only number one hit. Yeah, and after Wings disbanded, Denny released a dozen solo albums. He continued to tour, and he actually had plans for a new album next year. In 2018, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of the Moody Blues. I've been very fortunate. I got to see Denny quite a bit on the road over the years. I think I met him for the first time when I was 19. And... uh Gosh, I can't even count the times I, I was fortunate enough to see him play. He's always been regarded by people in the industry as a real professional, a real true musician, and somebody who was very easy to tour with. And it's a real loss, obviously, for our community, too. Yeah. We'll be talking a lot more about Denny in future episodes, especially as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Band on the Run. But for now, our deepest condolences go out to his wife, Elizabeth, and the rest of the family. Denny will be missed. Welcome to BC The Beatles, the podcast about the Beatles, everything about the Beatles 24-8. I'm Erica. And I'm Allison. And before we start, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts or stream us on Spotify. And if you're enjoying Because the Beatles, feel free to leave us a preferably five-star review so other Beatle maniacs can find us. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter slash X, and now TikTok too. We'll be posting videos, photos, and more from this episode and beyond. And you can also email us at bcthebeatles at gmail.com. Hello, Erica. Hello. Another week in the Beatles universe. I know. Look at us. Look at us. We're just motoring along here. And before we get into this really fun episode, I think you guys will really, really enjoy it. Just a little reminder about our giveaway. You can go to bcthebeatles.com, enter our monthly giveaway to win some really fun Beatles goodies. And uh, it's really easy. You know, you could do anything from leave us a review to follow us on Twitter. There's really a million different ways to enter. And that ends at midnight on December 15th. So we have a little bit more time. But hopefully we'll get your prizes out to you in time for the holidays. So yeah, bcthebeatles.com. And thank you to those who have already done it because we've seen some reviews, some entries. We're really excited to have that engagement with you guys. Yeah, totally. That's been awesome. So thank you so much. And uh, actually, Erica, I wanted to tell you, I haven't told you yet, but there was something really cool that happened. Okay, what? I'm so intrigued. (laughs) This comes from our friend in Liverpool, Dale Roberts, past podcast guest. He chatted with us, God, probably a couple of years ago now about um, the Cavern Club, Secrets of the Cavern Club. So we'll post it on our socials soon so you can check that out. So Dale told me this really cool story. This was maybe a couple months ago. So if you guys don't know Dale, he works for the Cavern Club, but he also works on the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour in Liverpool, which is awesome. And if you ever go, you should try to take it. It's just like a Magical Mystery Tour bus that takes you all around Liverpool to the Beatles sites. So Dale is a tour guide and he was on the bus and he just sort of said something like, oh, you know, blah, 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 the Cavern Club, you know, talking about that. And somebody raised their hand and they were like, oh, were you on the BC The Beatles podcast? What? Yeah. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? I love it. I was like, oh, my God, one of our listeners. Hi, if you're listening. Yeah. Hello. I hope you had fun in Liverpool. Yeah, that's so awesome. Thanks for shouting us out on the Magical Mystery Tour. I was just like shocked. That's amazing. I know. Thanks, Dale, for sharing the story, too. I know. We'll have to have him back on again soon. Definitely. He was really fun to chat with. Yeah. I wanted to save that, Erica, and share it with you and our listeners at the same time, because I thought it was just super fun. Well, thank you. I love that. Yeah. Well, on to the main event of the day, which is not, as we promised, the Mal Evans book with Ken Womack. We had a little scheduling swap, so we have something else today. Yes, and it's equally as fun. Oh, I think so. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, absolutely. 
So a few weeks ago, you may remember we had Giles Martin on to talk about the new Now and Then single and the Red and Blue remixes. And of course, if you haven't heard that one, go back and listen to it immediately because, you know, it's Giles and it was awesome. So at the end of the interview, we asked Giles about something intriguing we found on his social media that somebody had created a Giles Martin action figure when we were obsessed. Giles told us a story about a toy designer who had sent him first a George Martin action figure and later made one of Giles too. And Giles liked it so much that he arranged for a hundred of the George Martin action figures to be sold as a limited edition item in the Abbey Road store. Those action figures went on sale a few days later and they sold out literally within hours of being posted on their site. Yeah, if you snag one, let us know because we were not fortunate in, um, you know, procuring our own George Martin action figure. But fingers crossed, we'll get one someday. But of course, immediately we had to go on social media and find him. And the designer, the toy designer of these action figures is named David McGurk. And he actually makes a variety of retro pop culture action figures. And he has a company called Lightning Bolts Action Figures. And we'll link his socials and his site uh, in the show notes. You guys can check it out. And you know, what's funny is George and Giles Martin aren't the only Beatles related figures he's made. He (laughs) has made a number of others. And we're going to definitely discuss these with David. Of course, he's made the Beatles themselves, some of them, but also people in the Beatles periphery, like Paul McCartney's dad, Jim Mack. Amazing. So, so cool. And more recently, like within the past week or two weeks, He's made two versions, not one version, two versions of Brian Epstein, which, of course, I'm obsessed with. We loved the fact that he had this passion for the Beatles, that he's kind of a fellow traveler along this obsessive journey with us. And we have him on today to hear more about his experience with Giles and with Abbey Road. David, welcome to BC The Beatles. Welcome. How's it been since the George Martin action figure went up on sale on Abbey Road? Oh, it's been uh, <laughs> busy. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Been pretty busy, yeah. Yeah, it's the same sort of question that I get all the time. When are you making more? <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> when are you making more? Do you take commissions? Yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's been you that's been sending the emails, isn't it? I Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry, yeah, it's Erica. We'll tell you the truth, though. You already made Allison's day. She always says her favorite Beatle is Brian Epstein. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I was hoping, I'm like, when is he going to make a Brian action figure? And so yesterday I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like not only the suited Brian, but the stamp out the Beatles Brian. Yeah. It's so the Miami like hotel room Brian. So good. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't make Brian Epstein and not make the stamp out the Beatles one. I know. It's so funny. I mean, all the stuff that we know about Brian Epstein, we wouldn't have thought that that would have been something like he wouldn't have poked fun at himself like that. So I would be so interested to see just a lot more information. I don't know if you know the story behind him wearing that shirt or not. Uh, Because again, I'm like a big old Brian nerd. He's one of my favorite people. Like I got into the music industry because of him. So, you know, I can blame him for my career choices. (laughs) Um, but that shirt was given to him in Miami and he thought it was funny. So he wore it, but then he automatically took it off because he's like, I can't wear this. And he gave, then he gave it to George. And so that's the shirt that you see George wearing in pictures. Uh And Uh then George gave it to his son, Danny. And so Danny had it for years. And then the last I heard about that shirt was, it was in a, like a vintage store in London, like hanging on the wall. I don't know how much they want for it, but I'm willing to like take it out a loan. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, or you know, sort of sell some organs for it. Yeah, exactly. It's so strange to see any of the sort of Beatle family wearing it. You know, I don't think that you would ever see uh, Paul McCartney wearing it. I don't think he would ever wear no. it. No. But certainly I would like to take a look at it, you know. Totally. That's what we have to do. If we buy it, then we have to somehow convince Paul McCartney to put it on. Yes. And then we've hit the jackpot. We've done it all. Yeah. Well, that's it. I've I've got connections, so I'll certainly get it. Yes, Yes. I've heard. I've heard. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, let's just start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about what it is you do and how you started getting into it. So I make action figures that are sort of the size of uh, your Star Wars action figures, and they're based around that sort of time period. So from around about 1977 to about 1987. I got into it. I mean, it wasn't really me that got into it. It was it was my brother that sort of gave us the idea. There's four years between us, and 
when I was four, he would be eight, obviously, and he was convinced that we could somehow make action figures. He was really, really arty and very creative and just really talented. So he came up with the idea of we had like really small metal action figures or just, just like steel action figures and really small. And he figured out, he must have read it somewhere, that if you could press the action figure into a bar of soap, you could get an impression. Oh, wow. Yeah, for an eight-year-old, it's pretty far out. So he got this PVA glue, which is your regular school glue that you had as a kid. So he put it into the soap and it made this little tiny impression. It wasn't the greatest. It was, it was, it really wasn't anything, but it was the impression of what we pressed into the soap. So I was amazed. I thought it was, this was magic, you know? So we kind of went in different directions, but we always said that we were going to try and make these action figures. And as creativity grew, he grew into music. So did that. We joined a band together. We wrote songs and all this kind of stuff, but. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2012 at the age of 38. Oh, so, I'm sorry. No, it was terrible. So it, was, oh. it was a really hard time, but thank you. And basically, um, I was t- I was talking to someone at the funeral, one of his friends, and he was like, yeah, he, he did a lot of really strange things, didn't he? He would like make things and all that. And I says, yeah, that's right. I says, do you know, it's really funny. One time we tried to make this action figure and it just stopped me in my tracks at that point. And I thought, that's, that's not a bad idea, that. And um, that was really it. I thought I would make an action figure of him as a tribute. Mm. Maybe something cathartic for me. Yeah. I don't need to show anyone. I, I can just make it and then go, right, you know what it's like when someone close to you mm-hmm. passes you. You don't know what to do. So yeah. the only thing I know is creativity. So I just went and figured it out, really. It's such a nice connection back to him in that way. Yeah. Without him, I don't think I'd ever have done it. You know, it would never have been in my mind to think that, you know, again, when you think about action figures or, or even any bits of plastic, you think, how do you do something like that, you know? And unfortunately for me at the time, there was not a lot of information on the internet. You need to look into it yourself. And if you are fortunate enough that it just keeps tapping you on the shoulder, because that's what it did with me. I was waking up in the middle of the night, you know, oh, <laughs> look at this website, search for this type of thing. Because I just, for the life of me, I couldn't think, uh, you know, the blister, the bubble at the front. I couldn't think what that was called. And all these crazy things were coming up, obviously. So I'm Googling everything. <laughs> and then eventually it came up that it was called the blister. <laughs> the blister. <laughs> I went through months and months and months of stuff like that in order to find out how you actually do any of it really yeah i when i first saw them i was like oh he must be 3d printing them yeah in terms that a five-year-old with the experience that i have would understand how do you sculpt those faces there's sort of three phases to this the first phase is you could get parts from old action figures the vintage action figures take the bodies apart, put them on, put arms on a, that body, get a face that looks similar to, let's say, a celebrity or someone in a, a film, repaint it and package it. That's your first phase, which is a great way for anyone to start because they are vintage action figures. Then there is the next section that you would get to, which is making a mould of the figure, which is what myself and my brother tried to do. So you make a mould of the figure with silicon. And then you would put your resin into it and make copies of parts. The last section is your 3D printing. That's where I'm at now. I wish I'd just went straight in with 3D sculpting, but when I started, it wasn't a thing. How did you become a Beatles fan? I believe you're of the similar generation than we are that, you know, born after the Beatles broke up. And I'm always interested to find out how other people in our age group who are deeply passionate about the Beatles found them. My earliest memory, believe it or not, I was born in 77, so my earliest memory is John Lennon being killed. That's oh my God. It was so, so prevalent in my house. I'd got um, three brothers, and we were all, the Beatles were playing all the time, constantly. Because there was a point where the Beatles kind of went out of fashion a bit, mm-hmm. but not in our house. It was just, it was, the Beatles were everywhere. We were, we were so steeped in it. So... The day before my granddad had passed away, so it must have been really prevalent in my mind. So fantasy was playing all the time. And um, Rubber Soul and even just like the really early Beatles stuff and some of the bootleg BBC stuff, I remember as well, getting played quite a lot. 
and it was just always steeped in our house. But I've got a, quite a freaky memory, obviously, of, you know, I can remember when I was three, but it's only flashes, but I just remember the Beatles constant, constant playing. And I just always thought they were fascinating to look at. I mean, if you if you turn the sound down with the Beatles and just look at them, especially when they're doing things like Ed Sullivan or even just any of the live performances, they just look incredible. Yeah, and you could tell too, David, with the breadth of the figure shoe sculpt that you're very, very in the weeds like we are with the Beatles world, which we think is so cool. And we definitely want to go into that a little bit more. But uh, a few weeks ago, we had Giles Martin on our show, actually. And we had to ask him about your custom action figure. And he was so like excited about it. And he loved talking about it. And your interactions led to the George Martin action figures being available in the Abbey Road store, which must have been so surreal. Yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I made the, uh, the George Martin figure, a George Martin figure, about two and a half years ago. And it was for a friend of mine, actually, over in the States. He's he's a producer. And um, we were talking about all different action figures that you could make. And I says, look, the top of the tree is George Martin. And he was a, he literally finished the sentence. He says, yeah, oh, George Martin would be amazing. <laughs> and so I was like, at my first thought was I was going to make a, a black and white version of George Martin. That would be cool. Yeah, so you know yourself that in the, like 1962 and 63, all that footage of them in Abbey Road, it's just totally black and white and the sleeves mm-hmm. all rolled up and stuff like that. So what happened was I'd shared that photograph on Twitter and literally two and a half years later, I get a message. I think what happened was Giles had followed me and I'd sent him a message and says, look, I hope you're not angry or anything like that. I've made this because, you know, anything that's sort of bootleg or anything that you could make money out of, you know, if there's a lot of it, then there's, then it's, it's, it's theft. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just theft. But he says, no, no, no. I mean, he probably said to you, you know, no, no, I love these. These these are great. And instantly it was like speaking to one, one of my pals, you know. And he just uh, says, look, I'll, I'll get one made for you. And really that was it. So I went back to the drawing board and just kind of changed it slightly. I wanted to make it so that it was the first sort of week that the Beatles had met George Martin. So he wasn't really aware of what was in front of him. But Giles was so kind with his time because you know you know how busy he is obviously especially at this stage but while I was making the George Martin figure I thought it would be quite cool and I didn't tell him about it but I thought it'd be quite cool if I made one of, of Giles just put it in the box and just so they can get a bit of a, a surprise. Well he definitely loved it so was the action figure sold in the physical store at Abbey Road or just online do you remember? I mean the majority is online um, but in store as well. Well, they were online, but they sold out so fast, like within a couple of hours. Yeah. So, I mean, all I know is, is that I was told, you know, I mean, I was sent the photograph, obviously, of the figure sitting on the, the red desk that's in Abbey Road. And that was, you know, a freaked moment for me. I was like completely freaked out. So I went onto the website and it said sold out. So I was like, what, what's what do you mean sold out? I've literally just sent them. And you made quite a lot for a single person to manage. I mean, 100 pieces is a lot. Did you know you were going to make that many when you first talked to Giles? I wasn't quite prepared to make 100 of them because, you know, Giles, a, a nice conversation, you know, like, uh, oh, it would be really cool to get a couple of these put up in the store. I was thinking for decoration, but when I spoke to Abbey Road, it was like, no, we want a hundred of these. I was, you know, so it's quite a tall order. I was kind of hoping because I'm going to Abbey Road in a few weeks. So I was like, oh, if there's any in the store still, I'm definitely going to pick one up. So I was curious to see if they were actually in the physical store as well. I mean, they could very well be still there at this point. I don't know. I've got my fingers crossed, hardcore, and also David, as Erica alluded to earlier, like you've got a big fan in Paul McCartney. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that he's a fan, but. It was the story that Giles told me over the phone. He just said, you know, have you got time for a quick call? And obviously there was steam coming off my thumbs at that point. Yes. Of course. I have all the time in the world. Right. <laughs> I'd spoke to him and, and he, he started telling me the story that when the box got there, they were, uh, I think they were doing the Half Speed Master for the Red Rose Speedway album. And it just so happened that Paul McCartney was obviously there at that point. So he opened up the box and took the figures out and, Paul McCartney obviously handled them and they were stuck onto the desk, the one that recorded Abbey Road through. 
And Joe sent me a photograph and a photograph of him holding them. They were going to clear them away and get back to the session. And uh, apparently Paul said, no, leave it there. Leave, leave that there. So I miss him. It's my friend kind of thing. Oh, that's so sweet. For me, it's the best story I've ever, ever heard. If you're a huge Beatles fan, you know, y- your entire life you've been working up to something, anything to do with either Abbey Road or, or the Beatles and to hear that story. Plus the fact to get a figure into that studio and the studio too and, and the control room is just, it's mind blowing. But yeah, I mean, when I heard that story, I was, I was elated. Well, that's so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what a tribute to say that that brought George back into the studio. That must have been yeah. incredibly heartwarming. So you talked about making 100 figures. So I've got to ask, you know, how long did that take? And it seems like just a crazy amount of work. Oh, well, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it was. It was a crazy amount of work. The way I describe it is is I was just plate spinning a lot of the time, you know, because once the figures were there, it was a matter of painting them. So what I did was I would, I just broke them into, if you've got 100 of anything and you're looking at them, it's going to be pretty scary, you know, Mm. but... I was doing 10 at a time and then I turned around and there was a hundred little George Martins staring <laughs> at me. I was like, oh, right, okay, so we're, we're nearly there kind of thing. You just try and put as much as you can to try and reflect the time. I think maybe about three and a half months it took me. Wow. You go to a stage, I think, where you go, this isn't happening. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do this. No, no, this isn't going to. <laughs> but then you start to find, oh, I mean, at that point, you should just take some time away from it, shouldn't you? And just go, right, I'll do something else. Because in between that, I'm thinking other figures, you know, and I'm incapable of just simply sitting down and doing, you know, George Martin figures. I'm thinking lots of different things at the same time. And the creative thing, it doesn't turn off. And I'm grateful for that. But there's sometimes you just feel like going, listen, could you go away for five minutes while I... <laughs> Do you ever get burnt out? Because I feel like if it were me, I'd be like, okay, I am so sick of this. <laughs> I need like a good long break. Yeah, but a good incentive is you've been a Beatles fan your entire life. You are liaising with George Martin's son. George Martin's son is the head of the Beatle project. He's remixing albums. So the incentive is my entire life, I've been working up to something like this. So it keeps you really motivated now if it was something else like say something that you might not be so interested in it might be a bit more challenging but the George Martin was like I've said to so many people if I don't do anything else ever again with action figures I've completely smashed it completely because that's all I ever wanted to do to do something Mm -hmm. you know I never really thought I'd like to make Beatles figures I think that's a little cheeky you know (laughs) I've made two. Uh, I've made a Paul McCartney and I've made a Paul McCartney and the Beatles. Now, those were for him, right? Mm-hmm. Those were for him. And they went to the person they were meant to go to. But I don't know if Paul actually got them. I hear he did because that's where the Jim Mack figure obviously comes in as well. Right. Um, so those, yeah. those three figures went to him. So speaking of the Jim Mack figure... When we first saw the Giles photo, we looked you up online, we we're looking at it, and we were dying when we saw some of these yeah. like deeper cut. Like when we found Jim Mack, we were like, oh my God, we have to talk to this guy. I know. We were like texting back and forth. We're like, oh my God, there's a Jim Mack. We could not believe it. We were like screaming over text. It was never done before. And I'm always looking at things that haven't been done before. It's just a, one of the last things that you're thinking is, Paul McCartney's dad when he was yeah. in his jazz band, you know, it's just the last thing you're expecting. How do you choose who you're going to make into the action figure and like in what era of their life you're going to do it? That is something that comes to me very easily. If we're talking Beatles at this point, even if I just throw a couple of names out straight away, you'll be like, you need to make me that figure. So firstly, you know, you've got people like Astrid, you've got Klaus, oh, you've got yeah. Mal Evans, you've got... <sighs> Pete Best, which I'm working on just now, you've got so many of the Beatle sort of peripherals, and I hate calling them that because they are family, obviously, but you've got so many. And these are, you've got to remember, these are these are supposed to be one-off sort of art pieces. That's what they're supposed to be. I mean, I didn't really design it so that they were going to be mass-produced or there's going to be a hundred of them, but <laughs> I'll take it. But the early, any of the early Beatles stuff, you know, any of the Hamburg stuff, 
I'm just so interested in that era. Yeah. Um, and certainly that's how I would choose. I mean, it doesn't have to be the most popular point because like I say, making Beatles figures, if I made the Ed Sullivan or Hard Day's Night, I just think it's a little, I'm not going to say drab, but I think we could do a little better. Yeah, it's kind of been done a little bit. I've seen a million 1964 Beatles figures, but I have never seen Jim Mack or Brian or George Martin. The difficulty is that there was no photos of, of I mean, there's very little in the way of photos of uh, Paul McCartney's dad in terms mm -hmm. of playing in his band. So you've got to kind of, I just went straight back to the period and tried to get graphics and stuff like that and, and draw graphics that I thought would look that way and try and make it sort of vintage looking. But I guess... Again, you, you just you just choose whatever comes to your head. And unfortunately or fortunately, my head's a bit random, you know. So <laughs> but people like ourselves, we we'll identify straight away with any of the Beatle family, especially. I mean, I can see the one of Astrid just now. Plus it's it's just the connection. It's the connection to to the Beatles. Because all oh, oh, these guys made the Beatles, really. Oh, I love that. And we um, I have to ask, because we were sort of talking about this, are there any plans to make a Silla Black figure? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. All of the Cavern people, you've got to make any of the Cavern guys and girls. You've got to. Absolutely. There's, there's so many that, that, that you could make. But yeah, she's on the list as well. The next step is uh, to make like a, a Cavern Club like playset sort of thing, like with the backdrop <laughs> of the stage. So what you're doing is you're, you're expanding now. I am. I'm going to manage you, David. We're going to expand this enterprise. We're going to go mass okay. production. But that's the thing. It's like um, when I went into, you know, you're going to go to like Beatles shops and stuff like that. I'm always really wanting something to look of the time that's not right in the center. It's not Hardy's Night. It's not, you know, the interesting thing is when you start thinking about Rubber Soul, that's when I start getting interested in the figure aspect of it. I wouldn't touch any of that stuff, obviously, but it's the outside element of all that that I really find interesting. And any of the, like, the White Album stuff, if we could make Beatle figures of, say, like the White Album, I would like it just completely white. You know how iconic those photographs are that you get with the White Album? Mm -hmm. If you made figures like that and just stuck it on a white card, it would be a winner every time. They don't need to do anything, the Beatles. They just need to be there. They're just such an interesting band. But let's say I find mm. all the peripherals, everything, you know, Peter Brown, all, all these different people. And that's why I just thought it was so obvious that George Martin and Brian Epstein should be made and all the engineers as well should be made. Well, that White Album idea certainly would be easy on the packaging. Speaking of the packaging, the packaging for these is incredible. It's so retro. It's such an integral part of the figure. If I had one of these, I would never take it out of the box. Yeah, so the figures should never come out of the package. Now, I've sat and looked at the figures on their own, and yeah, I like them, but when they go into the packaging, they just dance. They just they just shine completely. But yeah, so there's lots of different ways to, to make the cards. What I don't really like doing is, is lifting artwork. I like to change it a little. That one of uh, George Martin. Now, at the time, obviously, we heard about now and then and the whole AI thing and stuff like that. What I wanted to do was get a photograph that you'd never seen before of George Martin. So I just stuck a lot of different photographs in the computer and something came out and it just looked it just looked rubbish, to be honest. And I just put it into one of my art programs and just started to paint layers and layers and layers. And eventually I thought, that's that looks like him. And that's really how I do it. So you've got to keep a lot of it in it for yourself. If you get quite excited about it then you're it's probably a lot of people are going to as well the card art is very textured so i've come from a bit of a photography background so i like film photography although if i take digital photography i always try and put the emulsions over it to make it look like a specific film stock i'm getting really boring and I'm, I'm really sorry but no it's fascinating i just love the texture and I've seen card art before where I know that there's no texture being put in there. There's a lot of guys out there that make figures and you can always tell if there's not a lot of effort being put in. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because a lot of the 80s figures, there wasn't a lot of effort and it's art. So it's really subjective. <laughs> but I mean, if I showed you the original George Martin, it's nothing to what it ended up because that's maybe a few days that I've spent 
and it's like you were saying earlier, you just take some time away from it and go back to it and go back. And eventually you've either over egged the pudding or you've you've got it. And more often than not, I've got it. Would you be up for doing more projects with Abbey Road? Yeah, of course. I would I'll would pretty much do anything in terms of Abbey Road. If Abbey Road said to me, listen, could you come and clean the, the bathrooms? Uh, I'd probably <laughs> do it. Same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a fascinating place. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are some talks about maybe doing something else, which I would love. And now that I know kind of what I'm doing, then it's even better. Because it's not just, you've got to remember, it's 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 fine to, to you know, to have a conversation with Giles about, you know, this would be great, get a couple in the shop and stuff. But there's the other work. You have to go and speak to the estate of George. There's lots of different things that go into mm-hmm. it. So by the time you actually sit there and, and you're you're making the figures, you know, you're thinking um, it's not just about making the figures, but um, I'm completely up for the challenge all the time. If someone said to me, could you make these George Martin action figures just the same for the rest of your life? I would completely do that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm asking for myself, but did you only make one of each of the Bryans? No, there's a few of the Bryans. Okay, good. Okay. I think I've made about four. Okay, okay. This is good to know. <laughs> just for just for information. <laughs> of course, yeah, not not for anything in particular, of course. Right. But, uh, I hear a, a lot of people say, you know, if you want to make me one, you know, I, I totally don't mind. I just love making anything to do with the Beatles, to be really honest. <laughs> anything. Well, I think those will be the questions on everyone's minds right now. Do you take commissions? And how long does a new commission take to create? I have taken commissions at the moment. Obviously, we're we're around about Christmas time, so I'm quite busy. But yeah, absolutely, I, I love hearing people's ideas. Sometimes, you know, you get really strange ideas that you wouldn't want to make. You know, because believe it or not, bad taste figures are are a thing as well, which I don't do. Oh my! Yeah, and it's quite big. It's quite. I mean, I have some emails that I could show you that you would be like, mm, no. <laughs> So keeping names anonymous, what's the weirdest request you've ever received? Oh, <laughs> some of the weirdest requests are, you know, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how much I can sort of say on the show, but, you know, there's, there's people that, that started World Wars, shall we say, Uh-oh. who are, um, you know, could you, could you make that figure? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I think it's very obvious when you look at the, the figures, I'm trying to be you know, a specific time period. I don't want to make like, you know, serial killers and stuff like that. Oh my God. Yes, yes. You get very strange requests. Um, and I've kind of went through all of them. But like I say, I've been doing it a while now and now I know how to, um, you know, say no without sounding really bad. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, you know, but it's strange what people want to hang on their walls, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, that that's that's truth. Yeah. So where can people follow you online? I'm most active on Instagram. So Lightning Bolts, Action Figures and the Bolts has got a Z. That's the best place to find me. And there's a little email link in there as well if you if anybody wants to say hi or ask a question. Great. We'll also drop a link to your website and your Instagram in our show description. So it'll be very easy to find for our listeners. That's so nice. Thank you. David, this was so great. And Thank yeah, you. I'm so excited to buy one of the Brian's when uh you know <laughs> payday kicks in well, it's my pleasure thank you thanks for asking me thank you nice to speak to you for sure thanks David see you later bye 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 thank you so much again to David for coming on the podcast that was so much fun we loved love talking to him about his career and the Beatles and we could have talked forever it was so much fun Check out his sites, Lightning Bolts Action Figures. We'll link all of his info in the show notes so you guys can check it out pretty easily. And as always, thanks again for listening to BC The Beatles. As always, subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. And please give us a rating review so other Beatle maniacs can find us. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, slash X, and TikTok. We'll be posting photos and more from this episode and beyond. And remember, you can always email us at bcthebeatles at gmail.com. See you next time. Bye. Bye.